Well, I spent slightly more than one year in a startup, involved in a startup. Actually, before that, I was in the financial sector. And uh, although I had the opportunity to do treasury and other stuff, but I decided to do SME banking. Back, back then, there wasn't any startup banking, as you know, uh, because I really liked to be part of this journey of building enterprise. And after that, I joined a startup upon coaxing of my boss in the bank. And I thought, you know, uh, we should really give it a try when we're young and energetic. Not that when we're older, we shouldn't, right? And um, so I understand the challenges and the burn rate, you know, um, and the importance of passion when you're starting a company. Thereafter, I moved on to economic development board, and instead of doing cluster development, I, I volunteered to look at the new area of promoting technopreneurship and venture capital. Technopreneurship, back then, whenever I go for a meeting, I have to spend 15 minutes explaining what is technopreneurship. Mark would know, right? Um, it wasn't like uh, something that a lot of young Singaporeans would want to go into. First of all, technopreneurship uh, was a name coined by Mr. Chiu Ming Kim and Dr. Tony Tan back then when uh, uh, they were part of MSTV. Technopreneurship is, uh, of course, a combination of technology and entrepreneurship. It's really using not just technology, but using innovative ways uh, to create value and add value, and thereby creating innovative business model and revenue model. And I thought that is really a good way to work with like-minded individuals to you know, see how Singapore can also develop into an innovation-driven economy. So in my 10 years uh, in ATP, I spent close to six years doing that. And that's how I got to know Carmelo. So very happy to see him uh, still driving a very successful seed company, XID, doing a bit of marketing for you. Are you doing pitching tomorrow? Face recognition, I told me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I learned a lot from our passionate innovators and entrepreneurs. Um, it's quite spoke, sorry, I, I, I haven't gone into my speech here, so you have to bear with me for a while. I, I stand between you and a tea break, is it? <laughs> and Miss Crack talked about crowdfunding. 15 years ago, you know, when we talk about funding, important ends are to, to, to me, uh, the way I look at it, when you want to drive, uh, enterprise creation and development, there are three important M's. First of all, of course, vitamin and money, right? Yeah, market is very important, and that's why companies in Singapore can think about gaining immediately global traction. Because, of course, we are limited by the small um, local market, but that allows our companies to really think, you know, uh, broadly. And the third one, to me, Singapore's most important M is the management talent. It's really about the founder, the pioneering team. But the reason to uh, money. Now we, we know back then, you know, business angels are very important because when you want to start a company, who do you turn to? F F F. Right? Officially FFS is friends, fans, and family. But the other F, I think leader chairman or Bansi would tell you. And you know, when you're joking with your friends, the other F is uh, not something I can see at the podium. But Right, uh, but they are important. They are very important business angel to to get it going. Right, the first ten thousand, fifty thousand. But now there is crowdfunding to fill that gap as well. And before you even go to Series A, then Series B, then crowdfunding. Back then, I know that we went we went to Israel to learn, yeah, from the best in innovation and invention. And we went to Silicon Valley to learn, and we learned that there is this thing called Valley of Death. Right? If you get your first burst of capital from your fans, friends and family and you don't quickly follow up with uh, some uh, funding support right, to develop proof of concept, that's where you know, you're going to slip into this value of that. So when I was in ADB, then we quickly, other than developing seeds, we also created the innovation um, commercialization grant. Of course, a lot of it has been passed the word to screen. So, sorry for the long rambling, you know, I was very inspired by Ms. Quack's passion and I would just want to assure you that in the Ministry of Trade Industry, a lot of us are very committed to work hand in hand um, with our partners like ACE, Dr. Mark Kong, you know, other than doing his work, he's wearing a lot of other hats doing national service like Chairman of Bansi, which stands for Business Angel Network Southeast Asia as well as uh, he's leading up ACE efforts. Huh? Our uh, committee for entrepreneurship. So now, it's uh, 
talking about my previous journey, so I want to really salute all of you for pressing on in this journey, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an innovator, or whether you're a business angel, or whether you're a VC. And uh, Singapore, we have started this journey though slightly more than 10 years ago. We think this is an ongoing journey that we need to all press on. And uh, this is an important year for Singapore, not just because we celebrated our 50th year of independence, but it's also time for us to reflect and see how we can uh, really look forward as a nation towards SG100. And as a nation, we are built on enterprise, right? In the past 50 years, we have transformed from a trading port to a global city with a very diversified economy. Like I've mentioned earlier, entrepreneurship has played an important role in bringing Singapore to where we are today. And startups, right? many of you are in the room, you started companies and you're a serial entrepreneur. Uh, we all know startups add vibrancy to the business environment. That churn is actually very important for an economy. Uh, it creates job, right? Each and every one of you, whether you hire five staff or ten staff, you're creating value, you're creating jobs for ten person, adding value to ten families, and contributing also to innovation by bringing new values. And moving forward, we know that advances in technology and globalization will certainly bring about more opportunities for innovation like what Ms. Quack has mentioned. So, we acknowledge and we agree that entrepreneurs will continue to have a very important role to play in helping Singapore take advantage of all these opportunities. Um, and Dr. Mark Horn reminded me that Minister Hinsuke Ruchas, the future economy, on his first day of work, went to Block 71 for a visit, right? And Singapore startup. Um, for some of the friends from the region, just want to report to you on our numbers in the startup ecosystem. Um, it's an ongoing journey, but uh, when we look at the number, it's something that uh, really keeps us going. The number of active startups have increased from 24,000 in 2005 to more than double that number, 55,000 last year. Right? But of course, we can say that formation number is just one thing, but to us, that's quite an important indicator to at least track, to make sure that we are not off track. And the total early stage entrepreneurial activity uh, in Singapore, which represents a percentage of working age population who are about to start, or those who have recently started a business, has also gone up, slightly more than double, from 4.9% in 2006 to 11% in 2014. And the third indicator you know, we, we looked at is, uh, you know, Singapore, we're quite besotted with ranking. Right? Singapore was also ranked 10th amongst the global startup ecosystem and in Asia, apparently top in the 2015 global startup ecosystem ranking by Compass. So although we've made a good start, but it is important that we press on uh, work closely with the community, the startup community, to keep up the momentum to support the continued growth of our startup ecosystem. I talked a bit about Block 71 earlier, uh, and some of you, uh, you know, are housed there in Block 71, and some expanded to Block 75. I've met some of you earlier. And uh, you remember earlier this year, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong launched the GTC Launchpad at One North to provide a nucleus for technology startups in Singapore. And to us, really, by bringing the startups, the incubators, and the venture capitalists together, the idea is to hopefully bring about and create the conducive environment like what Silicon Valley has successfully done and like what Israel has also successfully done. And we understand that Launchpad is slowly but surely becoming that fertile ground for our startups to scale into successful businesses of the future. In fact, in two years' time, by 2017, we do expect Launchpad to house as many as 500 startups and about 35 incubators. Now, when we talk about incubators and accelerators, again, it's a topic very close to my heart because when we started the whole initiative, Camelo will remember, we talk about pitches. Back then, we said the three ends are important to any entrepreneur. Vitamin N, management, and market. And we created different initiatives like elevator pitch. As we all know, uh, elevator pitch. If we can't you know, distill our selling point, our USP, our unique selling point of our company to a VC, to a business angel, 
in a minute. And frankly speaking, I don't think there's any elevator that takes one minute to where you want to go. So whether it's a 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you've got to make that pitch, right? So Camilla will remember that you know on a monthly basis we organize many, many elevator pitch across different hotspots. We call it hotspots because we had I think eight incubators, accelerators in different part of the island. And uh, so we're very happy that this crack is continuing this very important journey of giving our companies a platform to do elevator pitch. So please support our startups. And beyond infrastructural support, we also recognize that startups need access to funding, right? The vitamin N that I spoke about to get them off the ground. Dr. Mark Hon and myself, we had a long discussion about that just before the forum started. Now, I'll, please bear with me, please allow me to take the opportunity to give you an update on the, what are available to help you to kickstart your journey. Uh, Ms. Quack counted there are 187 initiatives, uh, grants. Don't worry, all right? Very soon it will be made a lot simpler for you to understand you know, where to go to. You don't have to plow through a glossary of 187 initiatives. But suffice to say, in the area of startup uh, enterprise creation, government has been working to address funding gaps uh, through the whole spectrum. Huh? Whether is it through tax incentives, grants, or even co-investment programs. Yes, we started co-investment schemes as early as 2001. Back then, we started the Seeds program. Camelo's company was one of the early seed company. Yeah? Um, Seeds is called Startup Enterprise Development Seed uh, Scheme. Seeds, S-E-E-D-S. You can Google that. And we also have a Business Angel Scheme where we work with different groups of uh, business angel. We co-fund it so that they can multiply the funds and support more companies. So through these two important schemes, Spring co-invests with business angel and venture capital firms in promising startups. So like I've mentioned, we started C scheme since 2001, and more than 80 million Sing dollar in funding support has been committed to more than 220 companies. SID Technology is one of them. Uh, and to further support startups, during budget 2015, just about seven months ago, we announced a further top-up of 75 million Sing dollar to Spring's equity investment program. So, like what Ms. Craig has mentioned, we are really crowding out her space. <laughs> right? But that's really because we believe in identifying market gaps, market inefficiency, and the government needs to quickly find a way to plug that gap, make it easier for aspiring entrepreneurs, whether it's a fresh grad from our IHLs or mid-career fellow Singaporeans, make sure that they don't remove barriers to entry for them to start a company, if they want to start a company. And specific focus in implementing programs uh, will be really focused on startups in emerging areas such as clean technology, right, advanced manufacturing, and uh, engineering. So, sorry, I have to use this platform to do a bit of marketing for my screen colleagues. So, do check it out, yeah? Of course, crowdfunding is an important fund, uh, uh, pillar of funding. Eh? Now, still talking about funding, to provide alternate uh, avenues of funding for startups, Spring is also piloting a venture debt financing program. This is quite new, so some of you may feel that this is new information. Um, we are starting this venture debt financing program with selected financial institutions to provide loans in promising startup with Spring sharing 50% of the default rates. Venture debt, if you are familiar with the model in Israel and Silicon Valley, venture debt makes it possible for startup to use debt financing as a lower cost alternative to equity financing and it has been found to be useful in overseas markets such as US. Uh, why do I say that? We all know the difference between debt funding and equity funding. Crowdfunding obviously is becoming an important source of money for startup, but just like what Ms. Quack has mentioned, uh, do read the, the book. I took some time to browse through and I can understand why it is a very costly book. Because it has a lot of words of wisdom from our speakers. Check it out, every page is differentiated. I think the publisher probably had a hard time printing this book. But uh, really important words of wisdom, and one of it, I think, says something like, um, if you're taking funding for your investor, uh, at the same time, you're also diluting your share. I think we know that. Eh? So as 
startup entrepreneurs, innovators, it's important to know where you want your company to be in terms of your own stake in the company and whether you want to do more debt or equity funding. I leave that to you, your expert. All in all, Spring aims to catalyze 100 venture debt loans total to, that were totaled about uh, 500 million Sing dollar over a pilot period of two years. Right? So I say that again. Spring aims to catalyze 100 venture debt loans and that will amount to about 500 million Sing dollars over a pilot period of two years. Now having said that, like I've mentioned, crowdfunding is really an emerging financing modality that is increasingly being used by startups all over the world. And um, according to Mass Solution, which is a global crowdfunding, uh, they, they say that global crowdfunding has experienced accelerated growth in 2014 that is quite unseen in other areas of uh, financing, expanding by more than 160% to reach 16.2 billion US dollars raised, up from 6.1 billion US dollars in 2030, just in a year, right? Almost double. And in the context of Asia, uh, although it's quite few that in Asia we have a lot of room uh, to improve, but I understand that the crowdfunding volumes have also grown significantly, with the amount raised increasing from US 809 million US dollars in 2013 to 3.4 billion US dollars last year. And that is three fold increase, 320% increase. So, way to go, Asia. And the crowdfunding landscape in Singapore. Uh, is also developing and evolving quite rapidly. Over the past few years, several crowdfunding sites have merged, have launched in Singapore. And this morning, I'm very happy that some of uh, our big boys in the crowdfunding space from other parts of the world are also setting up shops in Singapore that will really uh, diversify the landscape in Singapore. And uh, some of the sites that have already launched in Singapore includes Together.Asia, Crowdonomy, and Coexets. So with all this, entrepreneurs in Singapore really have so much uh, avenues of funding to get their projects and their startup off the ground. And I understand there's a very interesting story, please allow me to share, because I think um, we all need to hear these stories once in a while, right, to keep us going to press on in this journey. And one of these examples is this company called Bamboo Bee. How many of you are familiar with that movie? Oh, okay, are you an investor? Founder? Sorry? I advised you. Oh, you advised them? Well done, okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, huh? All right? I stand corrected. That will be 2013 Kickstarter campaign to design and build bikes from non processed bamboo, raised a total of 64,000 US dollars from 120 backers. Not bad for a start. And 60% um, more than their initial goal of uh, 40,000 US dollars. And I understand that with that initial funding, Bamboo Bee was able to produce the first batch of Bamboo Bee bicycles. And with that type of support, today Bamboo Bee has sold more than 1,300 bicycles globally and also they have clinched various awards such as Core 77 Design Awards in 2013 as well as Young Enterprise School Award at the 28th Taipei International Cycle Show in 2015. So, good advice. Well done. So really, we are all very encouraged um, that Ms. Quack and her committee and her youth and her family came together to pull off this event. And we want to thank all of you for spending, you know, your Monday and over the next three days over here I'm quite sure after the 3 days uh, session, we will realise that coming together, it will be more than some of all the previous parts. Yeah, because I, I sincerely believe that value is created and innovation happens you know, when uh, all the various disciplines come together, whether we are innovators, we are startups, uh, we are from the government, right, or from the academia, IHLs, or VCs, etc. So, we want to thank Ms. Quack for organising Crowdfunding Asia. And we're very happy that it has been initiated from ground up members of the startup community. And this is what Crowd is all about, like what she mentioned, to share the latest trends in crowdfunding 
and to provide opportunities for aspiring entrepreneurs, for startups, to connect with the potential investors. So I help them to make a pitch. Please be there at Stateland at Bras Basar tomorrow, right? Uh, it, she used some Mandarin earlier. In Mandarin, there's this word called Kui Ren, right? Benefactor. Each and every one of you can be our startup Kui Ren, just by kickstarting, yeah, yeah, crowdfunding, the, just by plugging the crowdfunding gap. So today's event, I understand, will feature a lot of speakers from all over the world, including our Israeli speaker, uh, plenary sessions across overarching themes such as social innovation and also bridging gaps with uh, talent, which is very important. And we hope that this will certainly, in fact, we trust that this will certainly contribute to the development and growth of our startup ecosystem in Singapore. So on this note, I want to wish everyone a wonderful 3 days uh, session here. And again, welcome to all our overseas guests. Please have some time for R&R. &R. I know as Singaporean hosts, we tend to pack your schedule with a lot of meetings, a lot of plenary sessions. But as a good host, please bring them around and hopefully there's time for good uh, local dishes like chili crab and good local drinks like uh, tiger beer. Both of this, this combination goes very well together. So have a wonderful week ahead and a wonderful time at this summit. Thank you very much.